Ayo, what's going on guys? My name is JoeGrex and today I'm here with a small update video for my Stamina Warden build. The link to the main videos is in the video description. The link to the dual build version, to the 2H version and to Christopher's video. He made a very good video with all the explanations in one video together. Check it out. This video here is only a small overview over the changes and I show you fast the sets and the stats. If you want to see a better explanation, then check the video description. It's a fast video here now. And I would say we start directly with the stats. And here you can see now the completely unbuffed stats. I'm still using 14 points in health, 50 in stamina. I'm still using the Shadow Mundus and the Arteum Takeaway Buff Buffwood. And I'm still a Wood Elf. But you can go with any other ways too. Orc is good and Nord is also very good with extra resistance. You don't need to be a Wood Elf. They buff the sustain with this update. So Wood Elf is not needed. I would say Nord or Orc are the best races for this in a moment and now I'm gonna show you here a picture of the fully buffed stats and you can see the stamina recovery is slightly higher like before. The maximum health is a bit higher on this picture here because we have the Emperor buff. Without the Emperor we still have 32k maximum health and the weapon damage is 7.2k. The weapon critical is a bit lower because we lose the passive from the champion points. We don't have 9% anymore weapon critical. We have only 3% now. So we have 6% less weapon critical, but it's still fine. We play crit build with the shadow monos, but we still have a good amount of weapon critical with the extra crit poison. So it's no problem. And the rest of the stats are the same. And now I would say we sh I show you the sets. And let's start with the first set. And here we still go with Briarheart with a Briarheart dagger in Nurnhound. There's no change to the set. It's still a good set for weapon critical and weapon damage. The offhand is a maze in Precise. There's a small nerf to this trait from the last build video. Precise was a bit stronger there, like 0.5%. But it's not, that's not a big deal. And I'm still using the Brutality Training Poisons here for the minor Brutality buff, the crit buff and the stamina train. On the back bar, I'm going with Clever Alchemist, a maze and a shield. The, it's not important that it's a maze. You can also go with a sword, whatever. The weapon is Neon Hound here and the shield is sturdy. Clever Alchemist also no change. It's still a good set for our maximum health and we get a great amount of weapon damage when we drink a potion on our back bar. Monster set. I'm still using Barlog, but there is an optional set that you can use when you don't have access to Barlog or when you say, oh, I can't see Barlog anymore, I use it so often. There's another set that you can use and it's Molakina. Molakina is also a very strong set and in some points it outperforms also Barlog because we get 560 weapon damage when we do two light attacks. It's easy to proc, we don't need the ultimate, we can use it without our ultimate. And 560 weapon damage is more than we get with Barlog. But with Barlog we get extra penetration. So if you use Barlog only with 125 ultimate for your Dawnbreaker and you don't charge so much ultimate points, Molakina is definitely stronger. But when you charge more ultimate points, then Barlog is stronger. So both sets are nice and it depends a bit on your playstyle, what you like. Barlog is good because it's 12 seconds, Molakina is only 6 seconds. And we get extra penetration with Barlog and when we charge, for example, 500 ultimate points and we're fighting a super tanky guy, we can kill him easier with Barlog than with Mulakina. But with Mulakina we can proc it easy with two light attacks here. So both sets are nice and when you don't have access to Barlog then you can definitely go with Mulakina and it's no big deal. I still enjoy Barlog a bit more. On console, maybe on PC it's a bit better, but on console sometimes it's so laggy that the light attacks are a bit buggy and yeah, that's the a small problem with it. Okay, now the next set pieces are a mix between Clever Alchemist and Briarheart here, the body pieces. I'm still going with all the pieces in Divine and with a maximum stamina enchantment. I'm still going with the talk of Tony Constancy Mythic infused with the weapon damage enchantment. There's no change. And one piece in Bloodthirsty and the other one is also infused. You can go with three piece infused, whatever you like. You can also go with more Bloodthirsty when you play in a group. Bloodthirsty is very strong. For solo, I would say infused. So there's also a change that you can do when you don't want to use the talk of Tony Constancy anymore. They buff the sustain. You don't really need it. Then you can go here with a Briarheart necklace or Clever Alchemist necklace and you use, for example, the Ring of the Pale Order. It's a bit extra heal in PvP. When you push your enemies and you spin an amount of uh, players, there's a group of players and you spin them, you attack them with your sub assaults, you hit them all, you get good heals with it. It's a small extra heal, you can use it when you don't want to use the talk of tonal constancy and the ring of trainee of course for the extra maximum health here. 
I forgot to say that I'm still using 5 piece in medium and 2 in heavy, all with divine and a stamina enchantment. Okay, now we talk about the champion points and here we're still using the same. 73 in Warlord, 77 in Mooncalf, 32 in Arcanist, 11 in Tenicity, 66 in Tumbling, 11 in Shadow Ward, 19 in Blast, 19 in Physical Weapon Expert, 20 in Shadowing Blows, 81 in Master at Arms, 48 in Precise Strikes, 40 in Piercing, 43 in Mighty, 72 in Ironclad and 56 in Resistant, 37 in Fixed Gint, 43 in Hardy and Elemental Defender and 19 in Quick Recovery. Okay, skills are also the same like before. Subterranean Assault, Cutting Dive, Bird of Prey, Arctic Blast, Whirling Blades, Dawnbreaker of Smiting. On the back bar I play the Werewolf Ultimate for the extra stamina recovery when we have it slotted. Or you can go also with the Permafrost or the Heal Ultimate, Sword and Board Ultimate, whatever you like. The Ice Fortress, the Nedge, the Rigor, Shuffle and a slot that we can use any skill. I'm using the Spores here now, you can also go with the Living Vines, the Queen Lotus is very good when you play solo. I'm using the Spores and group I can heal my mates, that's why I'm using the skill. Also the Nature's Grasp or the, the Morph here, where is it? This here heals you both. It's also a good... Uh, good skill when you play for example with two wands together you can heal each other um, Yeah, there are a few skills that you can use. It's a free slot that you can choose whatever you like. Okay That was the build video or the fast uh, Update for the build video. I hope you like it There also there was only some small changes nothing big and I wish you all a nice day Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. We are on the way to the 10k subscriber I would be really happy when we get it and we see us in the next video. Have a nice day and bye bye